In this video, we will begin to explore the new improvements to the Smart Retopo toolset in 3D Coat 2023's Retopo workspace. I want to start in the head region, working on areas like the eyes, maybe the horn, the nostrils, and the mouth, where the shapes are either circular or elliptical, because these forms actually help dictate the topological flow for the rest of the head. For those shapes, I want to use the strip mode, which is the second one in the drop down list here. Loft and quadrangulation are the two other primary modes. We will touch on those later, but I want to point out the other options in this list menu are other retopo tools in 3D Coat that you can quickly switch to by holding down the hotkey, just as you would with points and polygons, where you have the control key and the control shift key menus that invoke other retopo tools temporarily while the hotkeys are pressed. I'll go ahead and just start a strip here. I first want to right click and drag left and right to increase or decrease my brush size because the initial scale of the polygons along the strip will be based on brush size. I can make a single linear strip like this or I could make it connect in a closed spline. As you can see, we need to make some adjustments. One key improvement that was made to the strip tool is that it now snaps the end vertices together when a closed spline is created. Previously, a user would have to spend more time and effort trying to make the end vertices line up using the Bezier handles, but now they snap automatically. Another improvement is the ability to right mouse button click over a control point to create a hard edge and it will have Bezier handles which allow the artist to make adjustments to its orientation. By left mouse button clicking and dragging the control points, I can adjust the shape of the curve. The main reason why this preview looks so simplistic at this point is because we do not yet have enough segments to properly form the shape that we want. To correct that, let's go to the Tool Options panel and add some more U-spans. And V-spans will give us more edge loops to work with. In this case, I will leave it at 1. Once more, if I want to change the edge angle, I can adjust these Bezier handles to do so. If we need, we can double click along the spline to add additional control points, which will allow us to better shape the curve. We can also delete an existing control point by double clicking on it. I am speeding up the playback momentarily while I make a few adjustments. Before I hit the apply button or the enter key in order to generate polygons from this preview, I first want to look at the weld tolerance parameter and make sure it is sufficient to weld the vertices at the end here. While we are on this topic, I should mention, one improvement in the Smart Retopo toolset is in this particular area. Previously, when a user would hit the Apply button to generate new polygons, 3D Coat would look to weld all vertices together within the tolerance range across the entire mesh layer. There are times where this can produce an undesirable result because it could inadvertently affect areas where the verts are tightly grouped together. The corners of the mouth and the eyes are two such examples. Now it restricts the welding to work in a more localized manner rather than globally. It affects only the vertices that fall within the welding tolerance range of the newly created geometry. Let's create a new blank layer and hide the other. In the tool options panel, we can adjust the width of the strip. I can also adjust the alignment of the polygonal strip along the curve itself. Let's add some more spans. One quick and important tip I would add is that should you find yourself in a situation where you've hit the apply button or the enter key to create the polygons, and you find that the polygons are dipping beneath the surface of the sculpt object, then that's likely because there were not enough control points along the curve, in which case you would want to go back and add some additional control points. 
to tweak the position of the vertices or edges, I simply need to hover over a vertex. And when I see it highlighted, I can right mouse button click and drag. And obviously I would want to make sure that my brush size is not so large that it spans across multiple vertices at once. Also, if your brush is too big, you won't be able to pick a single edge like this. I can right mouse button click and drag it about to reposition it. When creating new polygons with the Smart Retopo tool set, the ability to tweak the resulting mesh on the fly is one of the new features in the release of 3D Coat 2023. Granted, we would normally try to position or tweak our preview strip to be as close as possible to what we want. But in this case, I wanted to allow a little bit of room to demonstrate the ability to tweak the newly created mesh. And like you can with the add split tool, when you hover over an edge, it's highlighted. You can remove it by hitting the delete key. Okay, so I'm going to undo. Control shift will allow you to add a loop here. This temporarily invokes the split rings tool. You can also hold down the control key and it will allow you to slide edges. So that's the same as using the slide edges tool. Okay. So let's say that we're happy with that and we come over to the nostrils and try to do something similar. But before I do, allow me to first touch on the simplification parameter in the tool options panel. This determines the density of the control points along the curve. The higher the simplification factor, the lower the number of control points will be. And then conversely, the lower the simplification factor, the higher the number of control points you'll have along the curve. In order to demonstrate, let me reduce the value downward somewhere around 0.2 or 3. I will hit escape and create a new curve. And you can see the number of control points has definitely increased. Normally you would think having more control points would be ideal, but there is a trade-off to it. When you want to make small adjustments to the shape of your curve, then you want a smaller number of points to have to make those adjustments with. So in short, my recommendation would be somewhere between 0.3 and 0.500 for your simplification factor. So let me hit escape. Now let's go the other direction by increasing the simplification factor to about one. And that may be okay for you, but as I said, you probably will have some polygons dipping beneath the surface because we don't have enough control points as you can see here. Okay, that's enough explanation for now. Let's go ahead and create our polygonal strip. Right click to make that a hard edge point. Next, I will add one loop and hit the enter key. Now I may want to give myself a little bit of room here around the lips and let's adjust the lighting a bit. So now I'm going to start here on the mouth. Let's make that maybe about 12 segments and I have symmetry turned on. You can hit the S key to invoke it. So let's go ahead and start right here at the center. Adjust the angle to make that straight. And then this one, maybe put that in the corner and right click. And I'm going to reduce the width a little bit. I think I'll add one more segment and then hit the apply button. I can see that my weld tolerance was not turned up high enough, so it did not weld at the symmetry line nor around the nostril. So I'm going back after the fact, right mouse button clicking to weld those vertices together. And with the control shift key combination, I'm going to split a few polygons to add some new edges. Okay, I'm going to finish up by creating 
strips for both of these small nubs or humps. I'm going to turn the symmetry plane on so I can better see where I place my cursor at the symmetry line. Using my 3D connection device to rotate around while I'm creating the curve. And make some adjustments here in the tool options panel. To scale the width down just a bit. I need to adjust the angle of both ends. Hit the enter key. Up here, I'm going to create a curve by selecting the close spline draw mode in the e-panel. I'm just clicking to lay down individual points, then hit the escape key when I'm done creating the spline. And click the edit points mode to change the position of any one of these points. I think I'm done. Now I can switch back to a regular brush draw mode and then hit add profile and pick it. I'll make some adjustments here as well before I hit the enter key. In the curse panel, I'm going to hide the curve and adjust the end angle here once more. And then hit the enter key to create the polygons. And with that, we will conclude this video and pick up in the next one looking at the loft and quadrangulation modes. Thank you for watching and we will see you then.